Okay, hello and welcome everybody. My name is Ben Munson with PharmQA. I'm a senior technology specialist here with PharmQA. Uh, today, I'm going to be walking you through our latest webinar. It's called Elevate Ag Service with PharmQA Analytics. So really what we're aimed after here is to give you an update on what we've added to analytics in the last, let's say 12 months. We've added quite a bit, and so we thought it was time for, for an update. Uh, for you to, to watch and to walk through. So that is the focus and a little housekeeping, a couple of housekeeping items. We do have chat available. Our goal is that at the end of the webinar, we will take those questions and answer those all at the end. So please do put those in the chat and we'll have people watching that. Also, I would just mention right away that if you have questions, feel free to reach us directly, support or myself with questions as we go through this. Uh, analytics is one of our more advanced fe advanced features, and we'd love to kind of hold your hand through the process of using and getting the most out of it. So with that said, we're going to talk through a few things today uh, more specifically. So we're going to walk through the basics. What is analytics? How do you set it up and do some configuration within your FarmQA account? I will also be walking through some examples of specific data sets that I've built up that I can showcase some of our features, but hopefully they're also practical to you as a viewer. And then, as I mentioned, we, we've built a lot, added a lot to analytics, and so that's gonna hopefully be a good chunk of this presentation is specifically the new content. So, so what exactly is new in FarmQA analytics? So the first bullet point there, we added a comparison tool, so you can compare one metric to another. And when I say metric, that can really be uh, what, whatever you want to configure in FarmQA as uh, as a standalone unit that say nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium could be considered a metric or it could be a stand count, insect count, et cetera. And so when I say compare metrics, this is a tool that would allow you to, for example, compare your current nitrogen levels to phosphorus or phosphorus to yield, et cetera. So I will showcase that. We added a handful of new charting tools. And so with that, there's better field to field comparisons, a uh, better line chart tool for pick list style questions. So that could be things in your scouting template, such as a growth stage question, maybe a high, medium, low picker. We can now chart that out a little better than we could before. Big one is year over year comparisons. And so if you're wondering how am I comparing this year versus the last year we planted a particular crop, there's a, a quick button to toggle into a, a, a time series comparison. And then uh, we also have a histogram view for what I call dense data sets. So things like maybe a yield file, a planting file that has a maybe 100,000, 200,000 points in it. We can slice that out looking at a histogram, your min max average values in that. Lastly, we, we allow you to save dashboards and your data tables. This one's been out for a little while, but I want to make sure to cover it. It's really allowing you to more quickly access the work that you've invested in analytics so you can share this to growers more easily and even for yourself to return and, and access graphs that you've created previously. So with that, uh, I want to spend a majority of our time in the demo itself. And so I'm going to jump over into what we call FarmQA controller, which is our web view. And with this, we're going to start out again with the basics of analytics. What is it? What does that mean to us? That's kind of a generic term. So we're going to start there. So first of all, analytics. This is an add-on feature within FarmQA. If you're watching this, would like to try it, reach out to us. We, we gladly provide free access to allow you to evaluate what the functionality can do for you. But it is an additional tab on the left-hand side that you will see. And when we say analytics, what this means is it's really our tool to uh, if you think of FarmQA perhaps as a database where you have scouting data, soil data, imagery information, all housed within FarmQA, analytics is our attempt to allow you to query that data and make meaningful decisions off of it. And the way we do that is by allowing you to have a handful of levers and dials that you can turn to create graphs and, and, and tables that condense the data down that you're interested in at a particular time. The way we go about doing that is by allowing you to create what we call metrics. Metrics are the building blocks of analytics. So they're individual components that you can then start to query. 
And so when I'm within the analytics tab at this moment, you can see in my demo count, when I look at metrics, you can see uh, a fairly long list of things that I'm tracking within my database, if you will. And so these are things like my yield assessments, growth stages, nutrient levels. And so if you're just starting out with analytics, this metric list would be would be empty. You wouldn't have anything that you're contributing to your analytics database. And so that's the first thing we'll we'll talk through today is, is how do you go about doing that? And then once the data is being pushed into analytics, how can you create those those graphs and charts that I was referring to? So a couple things I would say along those lines is we can create metrics off of things like scouting data. So when we say scouting data, that would be within your scouting templates. You could choose a series of questions that are gonna contribute to your analytics database. Within soil data, let's say you're importing or using our egg vice integration, those nutrient levels can automatically be contributed to the analytics portion of the product. Weather data is another one that we'll walk through, imagery and then machine data. Those can all be contributing sources or inputs into analytics. And so if you have any questions on those, we're gonna showcase just kind of a small subset of those uh, data types, but we can help you with any of those if you have questions and would like to explore other, other inputs. So to, to show the, the creation of metrics at, uh, in a couple different ways, we'll start in actually settings. And so I mentioned the three kind of data sets we'll talk through would be how you contribute metrics from scouting, weather data, and imagery. The easiest two actually are within for imagery and for weather. So if I click on the settings tab within my account and click on organizations, this is a function that you can get to as an admin of an account. Um, and so that's gonna be something if you do not see this page, you can contact your admin and perhaps share this webinar with them. But what I'm doing at this point is I'm scrolling down within the section to where I see the planet integration and the weather integrations portion of the, the product. The reason I'm directing you here is this is where you can actually automatically create metrics for any image, new image that's flowing into your farm QA account. This is specific to the, the planet integration in this case, but it allows us to say when we get a new image delivered to us from, from Planet, we're going to create a metric or a data point in the analytics database, if you will, for your end, average NDVI value for that image, NDRE, M savvy, red band, red edge. Those are specific indexes that we process based on the raw image we are getting. And, and we'll explain that a little bit more in a bit. The same concept goes for your weather integrations. You can set up metrics, so I can create a new metric or choose from existing metrics um, for how I want to map out my, my GDUs that are being calculated automatically by FarmQA. We've got a concept for your daily GDUs, season GDUs, daily precip, and season precip. And so if you want to use analytics for either imagery or weather, this is going to be your starting point, is configuring these uh, sliders or creating new metrics for each of these categories. The, the third data set that I mentioned would be scouting data. And so we'll walk through or talk through how you can set up a scouting metric. And that is done through your scouting template. So clicking on scouting and the templates in the top left. Now from this screen, you're viewing all of my existing scouting templates. For the sake of this, this webinar, I'm going to select my sugar beet template. Within here, you notice I have several sections. Just for reference, if you're watching this and are unfamiliar with the template designer, we do have a webinar that calls out a lot more detail on how you edit these templates. And so for now, I'm just gonna create a single question. And what I wanna showcase is you notice in my template, growth stages is just a text question. When it comes to a text question, we really can't do anything interesting with that data because it's text-based. So what I'll do, let's say I'm a, a, a customer who's just subscribed to an add-on of analytics, and I would like to kind of work through my templates and figure out how do I better utilize analytics and to, to make the most of my scouting data. One scenario here would be to delete out the growth stage question that's a text and instead add it in as a pick list. And 
the reason I'll do this again is so then they can start to chart out, let's say compare growth stages across fields or over time. And we can start to do that because it's a pick list or more known values to us. So I'm gonna create, recreate this question called growth stage. And in this case, this is a sugar beet template, as you can see in the top left. So I'm gonna add a few basic growth stages. So we'll just call this uh, germination. And on the right here, you can see these are different drop downs that I will get when I'm answering the growth stage question. So I'll say V1, uh, say V1.1, 0.5, and then we'll jump to V2. And we'll, we'll create a few others for the sake of the, the template itself. So you can you get the concept of how we could build out the, the question. In this case, again, this is just growth stage, but you could add any given question type. The ones that we support analytics or metrics on would be numeric. Pick list in this case would be the, the main two. Uh, and then you can also do it on your, your yield questions as well. So once the question is created, now on the very bottom right of your product, if you have analytics enabled within your account, you're going to see this section called metrics. And I can choose to track a metric for this question. So in this case, I'm going to check that box. And now I've got the option where I can use an existing metric. So I'll go ahead and click this to show you what that means. If I do that, now I'll get a drop down list of all of my known metrics in my particular account. And I can choose to use that metric. In this case, this is a brand new question I'm setting up. So I'm going to create a new metric for this question. It pre-populates it with the name of the question and the section that we have it in. And so in this case, that looks great. That's what I want. And so if I click Save, that will then create this question type as a metric. And what that term really means is that now when we go going forward, as we scout and input data into the mobile application specific to this growth stage question, it's going to contribute that answer and the date to the analytics database so you can then query it later. And so that's what we just set up here by checking this box. The, the other thing that I would say here is, let's say I also created a, a section called soil moisture. And within here, I have a question called um, percent field capacity. And it's run 0 through 100, and I want to track this as a metric as well. And so I'm going to create this as a new metric, and we're going to call it percent field capacity. The reason I'm calling this out is so I just created two metrics within this template. Let's say I went to a different template, and this time I went into my soybean template, and I created that same section for soil moisture here. What I'm attempting to call out is now that we create the same question, we want to reuse that existing metric. So here we don't want to create a new metric called percent field capacity, because then we'll have essentially two different uh, data points or entries into the analytics database. Whereas we really want that to be the same thing because we're comparing apples to apples when we're talking soil or field capacity, even though we're looking at sugar beets versus soybeans in this case. So I want to use existing metrics and choose that as my metric type. So that would be a scenario where you want to use the other option. So I will save my soybean template. Now we've created those metrics. Um, another thing to note is, let's say we, we come back into our sugar beet template and we look at that growth stage question. You'll notice this icon right here indicates that a metric is created. It's just a quick way to note that that's being done um, and that is uh, set up on that, on that question. So uh, moving on, so now to, to input or contribute new metrics to your account. So uh, what I'll do here is I'm going to jump over into the mobile app. I'm going to run a quick sync. And what this does is it makes sure that we have the latest template changes that I just did with that sugar beet template on the mobile app. I'm going to click on this field 890. What we'll do at this point, I'm going to, this will not be necessarily a typical flow in the sense that I'm going to try to backfill several scouting reports to show you what kind of a trend line could look like on this field. So just keep in mind, this is 890. I'm going to add an observation. And in this case, I have my growth stage question. So I'm going to answer this as germination, submit the report, and I'm going to do two or three others just so you can see how I can get a trend line. So we'll say this will jump to V1.1, and then I'm going to do two more here. So I know I'm clicking fast, but again, this is just to mock up some data to show you real time what this flow can look like. 
And this would be yourself in the field, your team scouting. And as I'm answering these questions, all of these questions or answers, I should say, are being contributed back into the analytics. And to prove that point, we're going to jump back to the web. We can see in my account, these are all the, the different reports I did. August 1st here, I did one, two, three, four reports. And so in this case, I'm just going to actually edit the reports and I'm going to force these dates back into a, a logical stage. So in this case, this was answered as, let me do, yep, germination. So let's say we move this, this back into, uh, let's call it uh, middle of April. And I save that out. And I will do the same thing for several of these other questions. And so V1.1, we'll push that similar uh, May, May 1st in this case, and do the last two, and push these back into the, let's say the middle of May. And the last one here, we're gonna push this into, let's just say middle of June. Okay, so now what I've just done, and again, I apologize, lots of clicks, but I wanted to show you real time how you can contribute. So now I've got a series of, of uh, inputs here that are spread throughout the season. So I just kind of simulated a, a full spring scouting session on one sugar beet field. So the next thing I'll show you is that just created metrics. So the question is, how can you see metrics? Where can you see them throughout the, the product? So a couple of things, uh, the first would actually be from the main map details view. So I'm gonna go back to my map. I'm going to click on my field. So this is the 890 field. And <clears throat> now within the left-hand pane, we show you everything we know about this field. And in this case, there's not a lot of data in, entered in, so I can keep it clean. But what, what, what I wanted to point out here is under the metric section this will appear for you as a user if you've enabled analytics and you have some analytics within this field so right now i see plant conditions that growth stage question um, i can click on this little icon on the right hand side and it will chart out those values real time on this map and so in this case growth stage we can see germination when that fell v1 v2 v6 kind of that progression from the map now to show you what that looks like on a, perhaps a better data set here. If I go back into my a different account that has more data, more metrics set up, what you could expect to see would be something like this. I've clicked on my field on the left-hand side, and in this case, I've got some weather metrics. So if you recall, I was talking about settings and creating those daily GDUs. You can see those values here. Your daily preset values would be another scenario or view that you might want to look at along with your, your season GDUs. And then uh, I, if I go back and use my growing season selector, I want you to focus on the left-hand pane, and let's say I go back into 2021. That data now reloads. We can see that this was a sugar beet field in 2021. And now I'm looking at my 2021 soil data results or my lab results. And so I can quickly see what my nutrient levels were on this field. But again, going to the, the button where I can actually see and chart out that data. I want to point this out because this is maybe more of a, uh, an interesting scenario where you can look at your ammonia values through a season. And in this case, what you're looking at, this is actually tissue data that was collected weekly throughout the season. And so you get a really nice progression line for this field, for this nutrient. And so you can see when those side dress applications were made um, throughout that, the season. And then you can go nutrient by nutrient, like your boron levels, your calcium, et cetera. So that is, that's one place where you can view your metrics. The second place would be from the soil tab. From the soil tab, the metrics here are going to be specific to soil data. So in my case, if I click that field 809, I'm not going to see my growth stage data here. I'm only going to see my, my metrics for those soil results. And so here's an example of what I mean by that. So in this view, I can see all my lab results where they were taken in the field. I can see the nutrients broken down in the table, but I can also access my metrics down in the bottom right and chart those out over time. So that's the second place. Third place is within the scouting tab. And this is a, a great chance to show you 
let me jump back over into the growth stage. So within any given report that I've I've done, so if I click on the June 21 report that I mocked up, again, this simply has growth stage in it, but we do see that metric icon showing up within the, the digital view of this scouting report. If I click on that, this will again get me to the charting type of looking at the growth stages over time. <clears throat> now, with that, so those are three places we can view analytics. The the place that you can you can manipulate those metrics in a lot more detail is analytics. And so this is where we'll where we'll land and probably spend the majority of our, our time here. So within analytics, I'll show you a couple things here. So within analytics, I now have the growth stage question that I set up. And if you recall, that was in my sugar beet template. So I had the germination, different growth stages. We will logically attempt to assign a color to each of those stages or pick list questions. And that may or may not be right. And so, for example, if I go over to the general crop health on the left, you can see I now have um, different a, a color palette assigned to this pickless question but in my case i would consider this incorrect where i want very poor perhaps to be red and very or excellent to be green and so you can actually click that little pencil icon on the right and change the colors for any of these questions so i'm going to more or less manually kind of invert this color palette and change this from from red yellow we'll go to to an orange here and then we'll go green for for excellent and so that is a way now, once we save this metric, when we start to look at those charts that we created, the bar charts, they will now respect this color palette that we edited. And so the, the point to be made here is this is where we can come in and, and edit anything about that metric or the, the metric that exists in the analytics database. The, the other thing I would quickly point out here is if it's a numeric question, so let's say like uh, you know potassium in this case, you can then set a logical range. So in my case, let's say that's, uh, let's just make it 10 to 250. And you can set a numeric, the number of decimal places you want to have displayed. And if I save that, that would then update. And you can also choose your color palettes and set or invert that range automatically when it's a numeric question type. So a couple options there. Now, uh, what I'll walk through here is we're actually gonna skip dashboards for now, but we're gonna talk through the report and the, the metric explorer tabs within analytics. <clears throat> the report tab. So what this is, is it's a, a grid or a table of all the data or analytics that we have tracked within your account. So again, going back to my concept of uh, a metric is contributing to the analytics database. This is how you can start to look at all that data and start to slice it into interesting views. So the report tab, what you'll notice here, a couple things. Top left, this is where you can actually access a dropdown. And in this case, these are all saved views. And so when I say a save view, think of it like a tab in, in Excel perhaps, where you've got easily accessed different data. So in my case, I'm looking at all my data. So if I scroll right, I've got GDUs and I've got scouting data, if it counts. But if I come down into just looking at, for example, my, my weather data, now I've got a saved view where I've got just my GDUs and my precip data. I've grouped this by a crop so I can get automatic averages for those crops. Um, so, so that, or I could toggle into, for example, my, my soil data dashboard. And now what you'll notice is I've done that, but in 2023, I've not gotten my lab results back. So I'll toggle back into a year that I know I have soil data, but I'll stay within the soil tab. And now we can access that data for that year in this in this view. So now each row in this case is a field, each column is a nutrient, and within here I can sort. So let's say I want to look at my fields that have the highest and lowest calcium amounts. I can sort that. I can actually tap on a cell and get that chart or that that trend line that we showed before. I can filter this out. So I could say just show me any field that has. Um, let's just say greater than, uh, let's say a thousand um, calcium. So now we fill it down and just get those results and we can see that here. So to create a view, what we can do is on the, the top left, we can create a new view 
And once we do that, we can name it. So I'm just going to call this uh, weather is probably a good example. So we'll call this weather 2.0. And now I'll, I'll save this out. And we'll notice that that is now in my drop down. So weather 2.0 is here. I can, I'm going to clear that filter out that I had for calcium. And within here, if I click on the, the column section, this shows me all the available columns or essentially metrics that I have within my account for this season. And you can see a lot of them are unselected. What I actually like to do is I actually like to start by unselecting everything and just choosing what I want to have displayed as columns. So growing or farm, field, crop, variety, acres. Scroll all the way to the bottom. I know I have um, some of my precipitation data. So daily precip, season precip, daily GDUs. That's all I want to have included in this saved view. So I'll click OK. Now it slices out just that data. And uh, in this case, I don't have a lot of data in 21. Let's jump into 23. So now this will have just the GDU data, precip data in that particular year as it's loading up here. And then I can save this out as a view. So right now I've just kind of mocked up this view. I'll save this out. And now we should have uh, that view accessible when we want to come back to it in the future. So we can jump between yield and back to weather. I'm guessing I've got a filter on here that I'm not seeing. So um, regardless, that's how, how you do it. Let's see, in 2022, maybe I've got more data. Put that load up here. The, the other thing I'll show in this report tab uh, while I'm here is that I've shown how you can sort columns. Uh, but what you can do here as well, let me jump into my other one. I'm not sure. I think I've got a filter that's not catching here. So what I, what I wanted to point out in this view is that I can, I can also group this data. Let me... Uh, Toggle up, come back here. So you can group this data. What I'll refer to here is in this case, we can group this by a crop or by a farm. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. So anyway, so I don't know why that data was gone, but now it's back. In this case, this view is actually already grouped. And what I mean by grouped is you can see these different subsections for beets, corn, field peas. The way that you can actually group these yourself is to get into edit mode of any one of these saved views. Um, so let's say uh, we come into a, a view, pencil icon in the top right, and now you see the section says drag a column header to, to group the data. And so what we mean by a column header would be crop, variety, farm. So if I grab crop and drop it in this blue section, I now have these categories that appear for those crops. But what's convenient about this is we also automatically average the values for that crop. So you can see my average calcium value for beets, average uh, boron value down here, and then I can save it and that grouping will be there every time I return to this view. Moving on to Metric Explorer. So Metric Explorer is where we can start to create these charts that I'm referring to. The, the starting point here is the, the metrics on the left. And so in this case, this is a, a comprehensive list of everything you've contributed into your, your analytics database. And so from here, we can look through the list and perhaps I'm going to start with the example of, um, actually, let's go back into the example I did with you of creating those scouting reports. So Metric Explorer, and if I, click on, I can see growth stage. So if we were to view this before I had created that the template and set up those questions, growth stage would not have been listed in here. I've now added that. And so I can click on growth stage and we should get a, a very similar bar chart to what we saw before. So this starts to get, get us into what's new. So previously on something like growth stages or pick list style questions, we only had this, this bar chart style. In the case of growth stages, you might look at this and say, well, this isn't very meaningful. How can I make sense of this data when this is kind of a progression through time? So one thing that's new is now that we've selected our metric, I can choose my charting style. So that's in this top left. Right now it says bar. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna change this into a, a line chart. So now what you can see is now it, it pushes or forces this data into a line chart where we have x-axis being the dates, 
y-axis being those growth stages. So I mocked up four different scouting reports, and so you can see germination for this field was in 418. Uh, we, we progressed into v, V1.1 on, on 5.1, et cetera. So it's a, a better way to visualize that same data set opposed to that bar chart, for example. So, so that's just one example of, of kind of a view we can create. Uh, a few other things we'll talk through here. So that is selecting a metric, you're choosing your charting type, but the, the last thing or critical, critical component here would be on the far right, you can filter the data further. Uh, and so what we'll look at here is we're going to choose the date on the top right. So this is collapsed, but I'm going to expand out the date. And we can choose the current growing season or break this data down by a, a preset inter interval. And so in my case, I'm looking at my season GDUs to date. And so I've got a chart of that data. I'm looking at 2022 in this case to get a full data set. I can also customize this. So let's say you wanted to specific look at GDUs and let's say you want to look at maybe just July of last year. So we're going to slice this data down and then click apply. It will now take that data and it will just zoom in on, on that data set that you see here. So that's an option there, custom date range. Um, a, a scenario here or maybe a, a more practical scenario would be yield data and maybe you've got 15 years worth of yield data and you want to see that what that looks like over time, you can set this back to, let's say 2008 and click save. And now you'll get data going all the way back across multiple seasons. So that's one way to do that. And I would say more of a, a practical scenario for that custom date range. So the other thing, uh, the next step I would say that we can do is uh, we can choose which of our farms or grower farm fields we want to have contribute to this graph. And so, what you're looking at here in my case is I've got months and farms, which is my demo count. And these are my subfolders, Minnesota farms, North Dakota farms, and a few others in here. So if we just want to look at the GDUs for months and farms, we could just select that here. And more specifically, we've got the field. So I could look at just field 111, 115, 117. So the more fields I select here, this is averaging data across those fields. And so that's why you see some of these drops in the data set is because I have different plant dates on these fields. And so this would be averaging that data <clears throat> that might have been coming in much lower on this date when it got planted, for example. So that's what we're doing here is we're choosing the, the organizations or specific fields that we want to, to chart out. We can do the same thing with crops. We could say, I want to look at my GDUs for just alfalfa. Let me select everything again. Just alfalfa, barley, beets, and canola. So now this, this chart, this graph, is averaging just the data from these growers and just these crops. I'll go back to, to selecting everything, and let's just do months and farms again. So uh, what we can do in addition to these, I would call master filters, with that being date, farm, field, and crops, is at the very bottom left, we can now start to kind of slice this data or break this up in different ways. So as I mentioned right now, this particular data set we're looking at, we're averaging all the daily GDU values for the fields and the crops I have selected. What we can do in this case, we're actually going to start with this middle filter on the bottom. It's the group by dimension. If I click on that, I now have the option to group this by fields, by farms, by crops, by varieties, so and, and master crops. I'm going to start in this case by clicking fields, and this there'll be a lot of data here, but this is going to break it out and give my my GDUs per field. And so that's what you're looking at here is every one of these lines is a is an individual field. <clears throat> so that's where you can see that drop in the average GDU line came in from this field here. Uh, where it got planted in relate and started to contribute to that average GDU line. And so with that, uh, you can also group this by farm. And let me go back and grab more farms here. So now you can see my Minnesota operation versus my North Dakota operation. And you can break it down by crop. So it's going to say GDUs on my corn versus soybeans. So with this, you notice that the crops are listed out in the legend. You can also interact with this legend, meaning that you could turn off crops as a whole from this view. 
And so, for example, let's say I want to compare just my barley to canola in GDUs or canola to field peas. You can see those lines turning on and off as I do that. And so that's a, a nice way to compare the crops. And with that being said, I like to actually have all these crops, oops, sorry, right here, all these crops turned on. And then you can just use the legend to turn them off if you don't want to look at that particular data set. So that's what this middle filter will do for you. Um, the other options that I'll, I'll display here is the annotations. And so what this is, this is specifically with recommendations. <clears throat> so uh, one of the, the, the logic here is that you could look at something like your, your aphid counts over time. And you could, let's just go to uh, maybe soybeans. So this is somewhat of a random data set, but you can see this, these would be counts, aphid counts over time for a, a region or a field. And when I say annotations, we can then turn on when did you apply a product. And so this will be kind of a lot of different recommendations displayed on here because I did a lot of different spray examples. But now if we look at soybeans again, you can see when you sprayed particular products. So those show up at the bottom as what we call annotations. And you can see what was sprayed. So if you see a particular response in a data set, you could say, is that because of a particular application? We'll turn those off in this case. Uh, a couple of things that we'll, we'll showcase is the, the access here. So uh, a particular scenario would be, let's look at uh, boron and let's go back into 2021 where we've got a, a good data set here. So what we can see in this case is the X axis. So this bottom line is currently uh, using the date to define that X axis. If I click on that, we can now pivot this data where that becomes fields. And so by doing that, now you can you no longer see time down here, but you see these as individual fields and this sorts from from lowest to highest. So when it, and it comes to boron, you can now more easily see, OK, well, this is clearly my lowest field for boron and this is my highest. Now, you may look at this and look at these values and say, well, uh, you know, maybe that's a pretty good boron level. That's sufficient. Don't need to apply anything. That's where you can actually go back and change these color palettes in metrics. So let's say for boron, we could change the, the color palette to, or the, I should say the range rather, to be uh, maybe zero through 0.75. And now those values will look more, more red, if you will, on that, uh, on that chart. So I clicked on the wrong tab there. You'd see more of the bars being represented as green because I changed or tightened up, if you will, that uh, X axis scale. So that that's uh, what we're doing there. So now you can see more green bars versus before it was more red and yellow. So that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to sit down with a grower and look through a nutrient plan for 2024 or the next season. You could clearly point out these are the fields that are deficient versus maybe you've got plenty of that nutrient. So anyway, this is one of the nice new views we added would be the, the field, or sorry, the, the pivot to make that X axis something other than time. You can also group this by farm and by crops. And so in here, um, you can see this is, we're still on boron, which crops in general had the lowest boron levels versus the highest. And so what this means is this bar, maybe we had 10 barley fields and we had three beet fields. We're averaging those the bar the boron values for those three beet fields, along with averaging the ten fields for the barley uh, sorry boron results for those barley fields to come up with this bar. So that's the x-axis pivot, and so you can see how you can uh, work your way through that versus going back to just your x-axis is time. So those are a couple of different uh, charting options. A couple of things that I would point out. Um, that we've, we've added on top of just this generic line chart would be, let's say we're going to look at, uh, in my case, I'm going to pull up a view that would be my season GDUs, and I want to look at just a particular field here. So my example uh, should be within this, uh, let's see, should be here in the Sentinel field. So these are the, the GDUs for 2021. But let's say I want to compare this across seasons. So this is something I called out in my intro. We, now we can toggle this button on, and now we can look at your average 
GDUs, so this is this can be used on any data set. I'm just using GDUs to, to showcase this function. So I'm looking at a line per year. And in this case, you, again, you can interact with that legend. So I could say, how, how are my season GDUs in 2023 comparing to the last time I, I planted canola or the same crop? And you can see that it was planted much earlier, you know, much higher slope, much warmer weather. And so that's how you can compare over seasons. Additionally, you can look at an average line. So you could look at how is 2020 a one comparing to the, well, more practically, how's 2023 comparing to the four year average? So you can look at that data set and, and uh, determine that. So those are a few new things we added. When it comes to the season comparison view, you can also do that from the map. So before I did show how you can access metrics from the map view, that season comparison is there as well. So if I come into, uh, in my case, we'll jump into 2023. I'm going I can view in this case all those metrics, but we'll do the season totals. And this buy season button is here now where it'll slice out that data in this view and give you a breakdown over time on that data set. So that's a, a nice way to, to get to that. And again, any data set you can use it on, GDUs is just a nice way to do that. Uh, the, the other thing that, that would be new if you're um, comparing us to the last webinar would be the comparison option. And what I mean by that is if I pull up my season GDUs again, and let's clean this data up and just look at uh, our particular farm. Actually, let's go back in that Sentinel field. So if I turn that on, you now have your season GDUs. So as this is going throughout the season, you can see um, where we're at now for GDUs, 3,400. So this has always been available as far as this view goes. You can also compare. So this is a new button here. And if you watch the update webinars, we call it out, but real quick, how this can be used. So if I click on that black circle, I can now choose a second or a third or a fourth metric to overlay onto the same view. And so I'll look at my daily precipitation and perhaps I want that visualized as a bar chart. So now I've got this view where I've got my season total GDUs in the back along with each, um, oh sorry, I did precip. So this is a good point. So now I can put precip on there. I'm gonna put that back to line chart. And then maybe I also want, uh, I meant to do my daily GDUs. And we'll do that as a bar chart. I'll stick with the line. Um, so now what you've got is really three data sets here. I've got my precipitation as those blue lines, but I can turn it off along with my daily GDUs and season GDUs. And so you can see, you know, where you had drops, cooler weather, warmer weather, and how that's trending throughout the year. And turn that on and off and interact with that data as is. So those are some new things. You can also export this, this graph or this chart out and get a PNG of that data set we just created. Um, a couple of things I'll call out here is we can now save this view. So we just invested some time into choosing my, my metric, setting up a date range, choosing the fields. And so I, I may want to return and view this graph in the future. Best way to do that, you can click save up here and we're gonna call this uh, webinar example. Now you can say who can see this. So I'm gonna choose everybody in my organization can see this weather data uh, and I'll, I'll save this out. Actually, I'm gonna make one more change. I'm actually gonna show this across all months and farms. Uh, now I'm gonna say this, we'll call this webinar. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna allow it so everybody in my organization can see this, this graph. And so now that that's saved, the reason I'm calling that out is now, let's say when you return, so let's say, you go off, you do something else, maybe you come back three days later and you want to say, okay, I want to, I want to look at that GDU graph again. So I return to analytics. I come back into metric explorer. And now instead of recreating that by scrolling down, finding GDUs, re recharting it, we can click over into the views. Now my webinar down here is that view I created. So I'll click on it. There we are. So that chart is there again. We don't have to recreate it. So, so that's, that's one thing. The other thing I would point out is kind of to, to start wrapping up here is the dashboard is where you can start to contribute multiple views into one place. So for example, um, similar to the report tab, we can create save dashboards. And so what I'll do, I'm going to jump back into a scenario where I have more data. So let's say I look at my, my soil dashboard for 2022. 
we can start to look at a nitrogen chart per field. You can look at how does how did nitrogen trend across a series of fields. Compare that to maybe two different fields. We can create field average maps. This one was called out in my last webinar if you're wondering how to create a view like this. But in this particular case, let's go to the dark map. We can show you how nitrogen was consumed over time or across fields. Uh, and so that's what you're looking at here is a kind of a time series, but from a viewed from a map perspective. So this is what we're referring to when it comes to a dashboard is each one of these views would be uh, what I just created. And then you can put multiple on one one dashboard. So for example, let's create a new dashboard. We're going to call this webinar dashboard. And once that's created, I can start to choose which of my individual views I want to contribute to this 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 uh, dashboard. So in my case, I'm going to make that webinar view. I'm going to add that one in. So that was all that the weather data. I'm going to add in, let's just say my uh, nitrogen lines or crops, and let's just grab one more, maybe my uh, aphid heat map, and that was in a different season. But now what I can do with these panes is if I edit these, I can say, well, I want this to be more dominant across the top, and I want to have this this maybe run halfway across. So again, I'm, I'm just dragging and dropping each one of these views to take up this space more efficiently, and then I can save this. So now again, if I go back and I'm using the product in, in a different way, and I want to return to that quick that view, I can come to my drop down, and I would have my my webinar dashboard here that would have those panes that I set up in a certain way. So that's a, a quick way that we can access this data and uh, get to it over time. So uh, kind of ending on some some real life scenarios here. So. One last data set we didn't touch on would be how does the imagery metrics work? And so what I'll I'll show here is that in my uh, demo account, I've got some fields that have planet imagery in this particular case. And we've been creating metrics on every image that's been flowing through. So once this loads up, we'll zoom into this field. Oops. So if I zoom into this field F30, and I click on, in this case, metrics. So we're going to look at the data that's coming across. So these are the indexes I was referring to. So the NDVI, MSAVI, we're, we're processing that data set on every field. What this allows you to do is to look at more or less the crop progression in any given field by looking at the raw data that we're looking for a vegetative index. We can look at this in the histogram view. So I referenced this of saying, dense data sets, we can start to represent this as, as different uh, bar charts or histograms. You can view this data over seasons. So this is, a, again, similar to that GDU, but we're looking at, in this case, NDVI. So the value here is looking at how is this crop progressing versus a, a previous season or versus the average. So this is 23 versus 2021. You can see we had a much, much uh, more lush crop, if you will or compare 2023 to the average. So that's similar tooling, but on a different data set, kind of practical scenario there. And then we can also start to look at a dashboard of purely imagery data. So you can look at that NDVI over time saved out in a view, but also those different indexes. So the, the red band, how's that responding versus the, the NDVI or MSAVI, or more interestingly, this would be looking at your average NDVI, but generating a line per field. And the way this becomes useful is you can start to look at harvest timing. And so you can see that this top line, you can see it's maturing. So this is more of a, let's say a corn crop, soybean crop, where these are more of your uh, a later season crop. And so that's where you can start to look to say, show me my average NDVI line across all my wheat fields, or alfalfa and start to use that for harvest timing as that starts to desiccate or drop down. So that's kind of a, a dashboard that's all pulled together here. And then <clears throat> again, just to, to pull this all together, I'm going to pull up uh, a separate demo account that I have here and show you some of the, the saved views and dashboards I have in, in this particular account that's more, I would say, built out. So if we look at, uh, sorry, let me just pull up this account for a second here. Uh, and again, this is we're getting close to questions. So if you have any, put them in the the uh, the chat, and we're going to address those very shortly here once I show this uh, roll up 
account here. So what I, I'll drag over here is an account where I've I've uh, uploaded some data sets. And in this particular case, I've got some save views looking at, for example, uh, petiole data. And I'm going to look back across seasons. So I could go to 2021 and pull up all my petiole data, petiole data for that year. I can see that broken down by field. Click to see that data across the season. And so you can use that growing season selector to jump through that data, get an average broken down by my, my, my variety in this case. I've got a series of, of saved views, but the value here again is, is in a simplified dashboard. And so I'm looking at my nutrients. So in this case, I created, I had that X axis be fields. And so when I'm looking at nutrients, my eye can simply scroll through here and say, okay, well, some of these fields are really high on, on potassium or magnesium. And that stands out in a dashboard of all the nutrients. And then the, the key thing here is that again, this is this toggle for growing seasons is respected in this view. So I could say, what were the nutrient levels in 2017? These graphs automatically render for that season. And I I can also filter by my growing or my growing unit or grower. Uh, and these these views will all get rendered for that particular grower. So with that, and then I can also look at, let's say, phenology, and we'll go to a, a more recent year. So you can look at how the crop is progressing for this year versus previous seasons. Um, maybe we want to go into looking at yield over time. So this this yield over time is a scenario where you would want to use one of those custom time, time charts and go back to 2010 and show that progression over time, or looking at that data by field and slicing it out and comparing maybe one field versus another. And this is, again, a longer time series. So you can see the progression of a particular field versus another over a long time span or break it down by that yield by, by field. So with that, those are some different views. We can do, again, the comparisons, different charting types that, that some of that is new. But really, hopefully, you can see throughout this, there's a lot of customization that comes with analytics. and. Uh, if you feel kind of overwhelmed with all the options, we are very much open to doing a specific session with you, helping you backfill some data, creating these chart, chart types. And along the way, if you have some feedback for us, we'd love to hear it. So with that, that's uh, the new content and analytics, and we're going to send it over to do some questions. If there are none, again, um, reach out directly if you have questions you don't want to share here, or we can do a specific session with you. Uh, through a, a Teams Teams meeting. So with that, thank you very much for joining, and I'm going to be looking at the the questions at this point. Thank you.